excited about here in the United States, but tonight is the first night of football. A new NFL season is underway. Or as, as Tom Brady calls it, the purge. You know, tonight, <laughs> the reigning champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, hosted America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, Guillermo's yeah. team. That's right. Guido's team as well, right? That's right, yes, sir. I don't know what happened, like, in the 70s, when we're right at that age, like, you either you root for the Cowboys or the Steelers. There wasn't really a choice. And you root for the Cowboys. That's right. Are you excited about the game I'm tonight? I'm very excited. Hopefully, we win tonight. Go I have Dallas. to say, I'm excited, too. I'm just glad I have a reason to wear my beer helmet on Sundays again. I was getting a lot of dirty looks at church. And, <laughs> but we have um, no football player, but we do have a 15-time NBA All-Star, the one and only Kazam himself, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. <laughs> to make all your wishes come true. Uh, he's big. He's very big. We have to take out the ceiling fans when Shaq is here. <laughs> Speaking of big, you know who isn't anymore? Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea. has not He's been out of sight for quite some time, but he was back and strutting his stuff at a midnight parade in Pyongyang last night. <laughs> handsome. He's like a <laughs> young Wayne Newton, you know? It's, somebody had a hot girl summer or something. Leader Kim, they think he lost about 44 pounds, and it does look, there he is. It's new body, new suit, new haircut, tan. Rumor is this transformation may have had something to do with five new friends he made. Um, and good for him, though. I, I know he's, he's a monster, but and, by the way, good for his horse, too. This poor thing was exhausted. <laughs> the parade at which uh, Kim Jong-un revealed his new physique was held to honor North Korea's new truck-mounted rocket launcher technology, which was invented 80 years ago. <laughs> I guess they just got it. It's, it's like being dragged out of bed to cheer for a toaster. Although, in <laughs> North Korea, actually, I think a toaster would be more popular, but no one is... Sure how Kim lost the weight. North Korea, they've got a severe food shortage over there, so maybe that had something to do with it, or maybe it had something to do with this. I tried everything to lose weight. Fad diets, walking slowly through factories and pointing at things, nothing worked. Until I tried Noom, Kim Jong Noom. Kim Jong Noom is different. It uses a brutally oppressive totalitarian rule to change your habits for good. Now I don't even get hungry when I feed my insubordinate relatives to wild dogs. Enter promo code Slim Kim for 40% off and start living your most glorious supreme life. Kim Jong Noom. It's the bomb. <laughs> Sure those are just calories burning. Kim Jong-un's Peloton instructor has to be the scariest job in the world, right? <laughs> At the White House today, President Biden broke into my soap operas to uh, <laughs> outline his new plan to squelch this virus. The plan is called Guam, and if you bought yourself a bottle of ivermectin in the last 14 days, you're going on a little trip there. <laughs> no, Biden announced a controversial plan to require all employers with more than 100 workers to get their people vaccinated or to require them to be tested every week. Uh, the president is also requiring all federal workers to get vaccinated, vaxxed and waxed. He wants his mailmen smooth. And, <laughs> of course, a lot of people are upset about this and they don't want to be told what to do, not even by the doctors who will, will eventually rush to to beg for help when they get sick. But, you know, there's a reason these pandemic movies end when the hero finds the cure for the disease. There's no contagion sequel, Matt Damon running around trying to convince everyone to take the vaccine. They just take the vaccine. And thank God, by the way, he sucks. We don't need more movies with him. But still... Um, I don't know, like a quarter of the country thinks herd immunity means they should be taking livestock medicine instead of the vaccination. <laughs> Joe Biden isn't the only politician trying to talk some reason into these sea biscuits. Even the governor of West Virginia is urging folks to get their shots. And if this guy isn't down home enough for you, it's time to pack up your banjo and head back to the swamp. For God's sakes of living, how difficult is this to understand? Why in the world do we have to come up with these crazy ideas? And they're crazy ideas. That, that, that the vaccine's got something in it and it's tracing people wherever they go. And the same very people that are saying that are carrying their cell phones around. I mean, 
Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the resistance. President Biden's had a, um, a rough month uh, with, you know, Afghanistan and the Delta variant and, of course, the Britney thing. Um, but <laughs> it's important to remember that less than a year ago, we had a president whose strategy for fighting the virus was drink bleach. I think they would like us to forget that. So from time to time, we look back at what was in the news a year ago this week. This is a new edition of This Week in COVID History. This week in COVID history, it's September 2020, and tis the season, election season. 54 days from now, we're going to win Michigan. We're going to win Wisconsin. We're going to win Minnesota. Pennsylvania. Nevada. New Hampshire. Whoa, things are getting desperate. Time to whip out the old Johnson and Johnson. Anybody else as president, you wouldn't be talking about vaccines for two or three years from now, I'll tell you right now. Listen to that vaccine-loving crowd. I'm sure they'll be the first to roll up their sleeves. But just what are these vaccines? Vaccines, a modern scientific marvel that can safely teach our immune system how to fight a virus. Wow, what idiot wouldn't want that? There's no COVID. It's a, it's a fake pandemic. If I die, if I die, what are you gonna do? Wear masks and stay inside for another year? Huh? I'd sooner eat horse pills. Besides, we're moving in the right direction. We're rounding the turn on the pandemic. We're rounding the turn. We are rounding the turn. We're rounding the final turn. Rounding, rounding the, the turn. turn. Rounding, rounding the turn. turn. Rounding the turn. We're rounding the turn. Rounding, rounding the, the turn. turn. Rounding the turn. We rounded so many turns, we're right back where we started. This has been This Week in COVID History. It's not funny because it's true. The Biden administration yesterday removed 18 military academy board members that were appointed by Trump, including uh, haunted dollar store Barbie doll Kellyanne Conway. <laughs> which, there's a name I haven't said in a while, Kellyanne Conway. I'm not going to say it any more times. I've seen Candyman. I know what might happen. <laughs> Sean Spicer got the boot, too, from his spot on the board at the Naval Academy. He is planning to sue to try to keep it, unlike Kellyanne, Sean Spicer at least did serve in the military. He was in the Navy. And in fact, I went on Wikipedia to find out more about his service and happened upon this detail I somehow missed. Uh, in April 1993, an article in the student paper, The College Voice, referred to Spicer as Sean Sphincter. Spicer submitted an angry complaint to the paper and followed up by pushing for college judicial action against the paper, for which he received further ribbing from the campus satirical publication, Blatt's. Oh, no. And I guess that's where his love affair with the media started. And <laughs> Sphincter or Spicer or whatever you call him was not happy to be removed from his post and he went on Newsmax last night to explain why. For 22 years, I've had the honor of serving alongside some of the most talented, patriotic, and brave individuals this country has to offer. I'm a proud graduate of the U.S. Naval War College. I've done multiple tours, and politics has never entered into my service. I've served under five different presidents of both parties. When you wear the uniform, you serve the commander-in-chief. That's right. And now let's take a look back at Sean Spicer in uniform. Say what you like, the man can dance. So, tough day for the comedy team of Spicer and Conway. You know, when we finally got rid of Trump, I assumed these people would just disappear. Like the White Walkers when Arya stabbed the Night Kings. <laughs> Sorry, I rewatched it over the summer. Hey, remember how we used to uh, make jokes about Mike Pence calling his wife mother? Well, a former aide to Mike Pence said in a podcast interview, he doesn't do that. She said that's a myth. The aide said, that would be very weird if he called his wife mother, which, yeah, that's kind of why we keep bringing it up. <laughs> but this woman was director of communications at the White House. She also said Donald Trump does his own makeup, which is maybe the least surprising thing I've ever heard about him. <laughs> of course he does his own makeup. Look at this makeup. I, if a professional did this, they would be fired out of a cannon. They so she said he dips a pillow in cheese dust and just starts whacking himself in the face with it. <laughs> I, would, I don't know. I would pay a lot of money to watch Donald Trump do a makeup tutorial on YouTube. <laughs> he could make it his next pay-per-view event. You know, last night I mentioned Trump and the prodigal son, DJ TJ, 
will commemorate the solemn 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks by doing color commentary for a boxing match featuring 58-year-old Evander Holyfield at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. Trump has reportedly been bragging that he's going to make an obscene amount of money for this gig, of, which of course they're paying. It's the only way they can get him to spend time with Don Jr. is to pay him an obscene amount of money. <laughs> but he wondered, like, what he knows. I mean, who would pay to listen to Trump BS his way through a boxing match? Holyfield might wind up biting his own ears off in this one. <laughs> Between Logan Paul and Donald Trump, boxing is once again the top source of income for the very worst people in the whole world. <laughs> you know, this is my uh, first week back to work after taking the summer off, and I had a lot of plans yeah. this summer, a lot of things I was going to do. I did not, I planned to read. I wound up reading one book about Trump and half a book about the Lakers, and that was it. <laughs> did you read any books over the summer, Guillermo? <laughs> no, you No, no, okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Sorry for suggesting okay. something ridiculous. You, we should... <laughs> We should have a book club, you know? Yeah, we should, yeah. Would you read the books if we had a book club? Yeah, I will, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very convincing. Anyway, <laughs> to make ourselves feel better about us not reading, we conducted a survey, went on the street, and we asked people to tell us, assuming they read something over the summer, what was the last book you read? Name something you read this summer. I read, uh, the last thing I read. Um, I don't know. Nothing. Uh, like the first paragraph of a couple news articles. COVID-19 guidelines all the time. Um, gosh, uh, People Magazine. Snowboard Mag. Snowboard Magazine, I read that recently, but that's it. What did you read? Uh, I mainly looked at the pictures. I didn't really actually read them. <laughs> What's the last book you read? And Frank in like eighth grade. <laughs> Time to Kill. Oh, when did you last read that? Uh, when it first came out. <laughs> that would be about 1992? Yeah, yes, sir, right around there. Uh, Captain Underpants book. And when did you read that? Probably some, sometime around last year. <laughs> Name something you read this summer. Coca-Cola. That's what you read? Yeah. Why the Dr. Pepper mask? Because I like Dr. Pepper, second choice. Number one, Coca-Cola, second, Dr. Pepper, cherry. What's third? Fanta orange. Fourth. And what's fourth? Four, it'll be Sprite. B what about fifth? Tequila. Mmm. What's sixth? Six, it'll be beer. What's seven? It'll be milk. Eight? Uh, chocolate milk. Chocolate milk. Yeah. Nine? Nine, it would be uh, a rice pudding. Rice pudding. You just drink that? Yeah, because I, I like to make it like soupy. Got it. What were we originally talking about? What did I read this summer? Oh, yeah, that doesn't matter. Let's go get a drink. Yeah, right now? Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, that took a weird turn. <laughs> right. If you like that video, click subscribe, and we'll be together until one of us dies.